both the volume and complexity of traffic on our roads keep increasing, and we are also ever more dependent on transport. But what happens when you get older and can't process a busy traffic situation so quickly? Or if you're on medication? How can we ensure that everyone can safely participate in traffic for as long as possible? Those are the questions we try to answer at Traffic Psychology and Sustained Mobility. Well, we grow older and keeping in touch with others is crucial. For that we need mobility. If we lose mobility, we cannot get in touch with others. And this leads to isolation and that can even lead to depression. So serious psychological problems. So as psychologists, we're looking at ways to keep people mobile. For instance, by giving them support while driving a car. Or if that's not possible, looking at other solutions. For instance, how can you support people during the ride on their electrical bicycle? New technology allows us to sit on the back of a bike, as it were, and see how the cyclist rides. Very useful in traffic psychology research. The thing I like most about traffic psychology is that it is so practical. For example, we can use these types of cameras to study older cyclists. And by using these types of cameras, we can look along with them while they're riding their own bicycle. Well, one of the things that we studied was whether we could keep cyclists away from the verge. We applied optical illusions in the shoulder of a psychopath. And with these cameras, we, uh, we, we could just look and see whether they kept more distance from these objects compared to a normal, uh, normal psychopath verge. We don't just conduct research, but also look for smart solutions. We can already do that by keeping a careful eye on the behaviours of older drivers. Well, what you see with the older people sometimes is that they drive as a couple. They drive together. They are both looking outside in general. He is uh, steering and taking care of control of the car. And she is looking out and telling him what to do. And the nice thing is that we, we can actually learn from that. We can, for instance, uh, find out ways how to optimise feedback to the driver. For instance, many navigation devices will tell you to turn left in 300 meters, but 300 meters is very, very abstract. It's a lot easier if you say turn left at a petrol station. And that is what in general the partner also says. So you can absolutely learn from that how to personalize a support system in a car. Our instrumented car allows us to get a very precise picture of driver behavior. We're not just researching the effects of aging, but also the effects of alcohol and drugs, like ecstasy, and also medication. Is it always unsafe to drive if you're using any of these substances? At the moment, uh, we are investigating if long-term users of certain drugs uh, are fit to drive, because with these drugs, at the moment, you are not allowed to drive in the Netherlands. The rules are based on an experiment with healthy people who didn't use these drugs, but they had to take it for the experiment. And we are really curious if people who chronically use these medications are fit to drive. Well, if it turns out that people who chronically use these medications are fit to drive, it will mean a lot for their mobility because uh, more, yeah, ten thousands of people in the Netherlands use these drugs and are officially not allowed to drive, so it mean, would mean a lot. Traffic psychologists are interested in hard data and exact figures, but we also pay a lot of attention to human behavior. We do that through innovation by using artificial intelligence. When I looked into the uh, early research, there are only a couple of uh, papers worldwide that look into the uh, interaction with cyclists in the simulator. And this was the first study that looked into cyclists in the simulator here at the University of Groningen. I never really thought about it, but uh, the more I uh, get into uh, scientific work, the more I start to like it, to be honest. Uh, yeah, it, it's hard work to uh, design and execute the study yourself. But in the end, when everything is uh, said and done, it's really rewarding to uh, gain a deeper kind of knowledge. 
Traffic psychology graduates can go on to academic careers, but it's also a very practical degree program. Our alumni work all over the world, drawing the links between behavior, practice, technology, and science in big infrastructure projects like this one in Amsterdam, for example. Nou, mijn studie ben ik terechtgekomen in de advieswereld. En nou, een van die projecten, daar staan we nu naast, dat is in Amsterdam bij de aanbouw, aanleg van de Gasperdammer Tunnel. En nou, daar zit ik uh, bij de ontwerpers aan tafel om uh, rekening te houden met vier verschillende groepen gebruikers van de tunnel. Dus dat zijn zowel de weggebruikers als uh, ja, beheer- en onderhoudspersoneel, uh, maar ook de wegverkeersleiders die in de verkeerscentrale zitten en de hulpdienst. Ik zit naast hun uh, bij het ontwerp uh, en ja, ben eigenlijk een soort van luis in de pels om uh, ja, kritisch te zijn op hetgene wat zij ontwerpen. Vooral bij maatoplossingen wordt niet altijd rekening gehouden met een stukje gebruikersvriendelijkheid, consistentie of logica. Nou, dat is belangrijk om vooral fouten te voorkomen. Uh, als bijvoorbeeld knoppen op een onlogische plek zijn, uh, zijn uh, ontworpen, dan kost het de gebruiker kost het te veel energie om te moeten zoeken van welke knop moet hij bijvoorbeeld indrukken. En uh, ja, dat, dat wil je voorkomen. Groningen is the only university in the Netherlands that offers a master's degree program in traffic psychology. Are you interested? Then take a look at our website www.trafficpsychologygroningen.info Met verkeerspsychologie daar kun je terecht uh, ja, binnen de wereld van verkeersveiligheid. Uh, ja, je leert veel over gedrag en kennis van verschillende groepen weggebruikers. En uh, ja, daarmee kun je bij allerlei verschillende leuke projecten kun je in Nederland en wereldwijd kun je terecht.